In this video, I'm going to determine the voltage across this load here, and I'm going to do it using LT Spice. Now we know that the total voltage will be the sum of these three voltages, as I've shown in this equation here. And since all of these voltage sources are AC voltage sources, they're phasors. So what we're doing is using LT Spice to do vector addition for us. Now this problem is from an online textbook, so if you want to see how to do this vector addition yourself, check out the link in the description. Now let's jump into LT Spice and start building the circuit. So I will start by dropping in some voltage sources, and I'll configure them in a sec. And then a resistive load and a common reference. Now I'll wire up all of these components and then configure the components. The resistive load doesn't really matter. I'm going to set it to 10 kilo ohms. It doesn't matter because since it's a resistor, it's not going to affect the magnitude of the voltage or the phase of the voltage. And to configure each one of these voltage sources to be the correct AC values, I can right click on them, go to advanced, select sine wave, and then configure the sine wave to be the way that I want it to be. There's not going to be any DC offset in any of these. The first voltage will have an amplitude of 22 volts at 60 hertz. There's no time delay, no theta. There is a phase angle, a phase shift of negative 64 degrees. And that's it for the first one. I can do the same thing for the second one. Its amplitude is 12 volts, frequency 60 hertz also, and a phase shift of 35 degrees. And the final one, 15 volts, 60 hertz, zero degrees. And you can see that the configuration for each one of these voltage sources is written out beside the source. And then the next thing to do is to write a SPICE directive to tell it what type of simulation to do. I'm gonna look at the transient response and I'm going to do a step size of 100 microseconds. And I'm going to run it for 0 0.05 seconds, which will give me, you know, three or four cycles of the sine wave at 60 hertz. Okay, I will drop that at the bottom there. And then I can go up here to simulate. There's my simulation window. The two signals that I want to look at, I want to look at the V3 here because that will show me the reference point since it has a phase shift of zero degrees. And then I'm going to look at the voltage across the resistor because that's the voltage that I want to see. And that's essentially the sum of these three voltages. And that's what it looks like. And you can see that the amplitude is somewhere around 35 volts. And it's got a little bit of a phase shift compared to the reference. Now, to make the measurements, I could go and click on the node and drag it up to the peak. And I can see that the amplitude at the peak is about 36.8 volts. And I could go down to the zero crossing, which is there, and take a measurement of the time, and then switch over to the other node and look at its zero crossing and take a measurement of the time. And then based on the time difference between the two, I could figure out what the phase shift is. But there is a trick that I can use here instead of doing all of that. What I can do is do some measurements. And I'm just going to drop them here because they're fairly long, and then I'll explain what those measurements do. Okay, here are my measurements that I'm going to make. And, and I made each one of these by clicking on the dot .op here and then typing out the measurement that I want to make. These first three measurements are basically determining the phase difference between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage from V3, which is my, my reference with zero phase shift. And, and the way that it works is I'm measuring two different times and then figuring out that phase shift that that time represents. So the first time, T1, is the time from the second rise of N001, so that's this voltage here, to the third rise of N001. So that's telling me what the period of this signal is. The second one is telling me what is the rise from the rise of N001, the second rise of it, to the second rise of N003. That's telling me the time between the two signals. And then this last one is calculating the phase based on that time difference. Then this fourth measurement is simply telling me the maximum of N001, so the maximum of the voltage across this. So when I run the simulation, it's going to create in the log file, in the error log file actually, the measurements. It's going to determine these measurements and print them out in that log file. And the way that I view the log file is going to view here, come down to the SPICE error log, and here's the value for T1, here's the value for T2, 
here's my phase calculation, which is telling me the phase is negative 20.5011 degrees. And here's my Vmax calculation, which is telling me the max is 36.8018. And so putting this together, this is saying that the voltage across the load is 36.8018 volts with a phase angle of negative 20.5011 degrees. So going back to my original circuit drawing here, the sum of these three voltages is 36.8018 volts with a phase angle of negative 20.5011 degrees. At the beginning of the video, I said to check out a link to an open source textbook, which presented this problem, and it showed you how to solve it by hand. And if you go to that link, you will find that the answer when you solve it by hand is equal to this answer right here, showing that we can indeed use LT Spice to do some vector addition. So thank you very much for watching. See you next time.